it's a coin flip between it going up and it going down. But what we do know is the supply of Bitcoin from the miners will halve. So over time, there's less new supply, and therefore the supply has to be met by existing participants selling. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Finance Wolf. In this video, Raul Pal talks about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Experienced a big rise in the crypto market, especially Bitcoin, which went up 150%. Now we're moving into what's called crypto summer, a time when prices are expected to hit new all-time highs and there will be a lot of activity. Bitcoin has already reached its all-time high, and it doesn't matter if it has broken out by the time this video comes out, it's normal for prices to go up and down before a big event. By subscribing to the channel and turning on post notifications for similar material in the future, you can join the conversation. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Now, considering about 60 to 80% of all Bitcoin holders don't sell, they just hold, there's actually quite limited supply around. So when you add in a kind of macro bull market, it tends to then tilt the supply-demand imbalance wildly in favor of demand. Not enough supply, too much demand. Add the ETF in, and that adds more FOMO. It's easier for people to get in. And before you know it, you start building this banana zone cycle. So the halving itself is a non-event. Um, it's really, it's the signal that you're about to come into crypto summer, which happens to coincide with the presidential election years every time. And it also corresponds with what I call the everything code cycle, which is the debt refinancing cycle, which is the macro cycle. They're all the same thing. So you get this kind of powerful dynamic of politicians giving out free candy because they're going into an election stimulus. You tend to have a liquidity cycle because of the business cycle, because they have to refinance the debts of the governments. And you tend to have the Bitcoin halving, which is a reduction in supply. And that's why these periods get really quite exciting. If slash when the Federal Reserve cuts rates for the first time in years later this year, what will that mean for crypto? I think it's been anticipated by the markets. Um, but it just, at top level, if you think of most people who've got credit card debts or mortgages or interest payments on cars, it just makes everybody's life a little bit easier. And if you've got a little bit more discretionary spending, you might be able to put it into the market. And so at the at the margin, it'll help. I mean, obviously it would help a lot if rates went down to 2%. Are they gonna get there or not? Certainly not this year, maybe next year. It depends what happens to inflation, depends what happens on a number of different levels. But really it's not interest rates that actually drive the world, it's liquidity. Liquidity is the money that the, the central banks put into the system, often in conjunction with the government, to try and generate economic growth or drive markets. And we bottomed in liquidity, I think, again, last time we spoke, back in November 2020, uh, two, 2022. That was the bottom of the liquidity cycle. It happened to be the bottom of the crypto cycle and bottom of technology, because those are the forward-looking asset classes. And going forward, my work suggests that liquidity should continue to ease all the way into 2025. Um, so therefore, if we've got Rising liquidity against this backdrop, it should be positive. And by the way, to your credit, the last time I had you on, or back in end of 2022, I asked you, are you worried about a recession coming? And you said, the recession's now. You know, people are the most depressed now. It'll only get better. And you turned out to be right, to your credit. Um, so I want to go forward thinking, maybe in a longer term time span. Are you in the Michael Saylor camp that Bitcoin will most likely hit a million dollars? Yeah, so how I back this out is two different ways. One, I just look at the log chart of Bitcoin. That trend, you can extrapolate it, and somewhere around 2030, it'll be a million dollars. That sounds as ridiculous today as it did when I first bought it at $200, and I put a price projection of $100,000. Uh, I said it's actually going to a million, but I'm going to discount myself for being an idiot by 90%. So it cost $200. It could go to zero at that time, certainly, because that was 2013. But my price projections, 100,000. And people said, this is ridiculous. I said, it's the best macro trade of all time. So the million dollars doesn't seem that preposterous. Um, 
The other way I back it out is when I look at the adoption of cryptocurrency. So you use as a proxy the number of active wallets. Now, we all know that's not a perfect proxy because people have multiple wallets. But you compare that to IP addresses for the internet. Start them at both 5 million. Now, people have multiple IP addresses as well. So it's very similar. It's just directionally gives you an idea. Crypto is growing at twice the speed of the internet in terms of adoption. So it's the fastest adoption of any technology and any asset class the world has ever seen. So if we just assume that growth slows, as it did with the internet, because once you get bigger and bigger numbers, it's hard to grow at such a rate. So it goes from, let's say, 175% a year where it's been trending and goes to 43% a year, which is what the internet did from year eight onwards. Well, crypto gets to a billion people by the end of next year, a billion active wallets, and it gets to 4 billion by 2030. Well, at 4 billion, the price will certainly be a million dollars. So it kind of backs out from the adoption of the technology and of the log chart, because the log chart basically is the adoption of the technology. It's difficult to know what kind of cycle we're going to be dealing with. There's a school of thought that says it's a left translated cycle, which means it goes up fast early and then peaks early. Most would finish in 2025 in December. That's normally how these crypto cycles have finished. That, that third year would be the a December, November kind of period. So could it come earlier and peter out this year? There's definitely a probability of that. What price would that be? I would say 200,000, something like that. And that would be, okay, that's gone very far, very fast. The most likely outcome is a standard bull market. Now, the last one we had, 2020, 2021, was actually a stunted cycle because really the final leg never happened. We had a huge final leg in 2017 and an even more enormous one in 2013. But last time around, we didn't get one, which caught everybody off surprise, including myself. So somewhere that would be, you know, Bitcoin gets to, let's say, 200 to 250,000 um, peaks somewhere between the summer and the end of the year. OK, that seems pretty reasonable. The other probability is that we have a full bubble cycle because now there's more access to it by the ETFs. There's more acceptance. There's more regulatory acceptance. Um, it captures more mind share. There's like 110 million Coinbase wallets and only about 10 million are active right now. So that number can go up dramatically. So we can see a huge participation um, and a final kind of belief that this is this is it. That could happen. And in which case, then you would see an extension to maybe 400,000 plus in this cycle. Um, but I would give the short cycle and the bubble cycle roughly the same probabilities. I'm probably more earning to earning towards the bubble cycle, but let's call them both 20% probability and 60% for something normal. Pav Durov is the founder of the encrypted chat app Telegram. Some people think that the more government surveillance will lead to the creation of safe communication devices based on cryptocurrency. In an April 17 interview with Tucker Carlson, Derv talked about how the government is making it harder for people to share private information. He was worried about how privacy is being lost in the world and how governments are becoming less tolerant of it. This trend is caused by the growing technological power of Go. Please like this video if it helps you learn something. Please follow our channel Finance Wolf and see you in the next movie.